the strain energy refers to the internal energy that is stored within the solid material and due to the deformation when the beam is subjected to the external loads like UDL point load couple. This deformation causes the internal stresses that is the bending stress and we can very well calculate the bending stress using the flexure formula which is given as bending moment M divided by moment of inertia I is same as equal to the bending stress B at a distance Y from the neutral axis. Now depending upon the reaction at the two support here the bending moment will continuously vary. So we'll consider here one section at a distance equal to X from the left support that is from A. So at a distance X here we can calculate here the value of bending moment. Let's say the bending moment will be equal to mx and this value of mx can be calculated as sigma b multiplied by i divided by y. So bending moment is same as equal to the corresponding bending stress that equal to sigma b x at location x multiplied by the moment of inertia i divided by the, the distance from the neutral axis. So we have bending moment is same as equal to the bending stress multiplied by moment of inertia divided by y where y is the distance from the neutral axis. We are already developed the formula for strain energy that is u is equal to sigma square upon 2 times of E multiplied by dv. In this case we will only consider the effect of the bending stress and the effect of the shear stress is neglected. So our discussion is only for the bending stress and the effect of the shear stress is neglected. We can calculate here the bending stress at any location x which is represented by sigma bx. Hereafter I will represent this value as sigma x that is the normal stress at location x is same as equal to the bending moment m at that location that is mx multiplied by y that is the distance from the neutral axis divided by the moment of inertia of the given cross section. Since here the bending moment is variable value is changes with respect to x therefore the bending stress will also change. So we can calculate here the strain energy due to bending by method of integration. Let u represents here the strain energy and we have integral of normal stress square that is sigma x square divided by 2 times of n modulus multiplied by dv. Now this value of dv we can again write as a product of dA multiplied by dx. So we have a certain section here of thickness equal to dx and for this one we have area equal to dA. So we can write here dv is equal to dA multiplied by dx. So this one is elemental volume. So let's substitute here dv is equal to dA multiplied by dx. So we have integral. Sigma x square is same as equal to mx into y divided by i whole square. So you will get the first term as mx square multiplied by v of y square divided by v of 2 times of e and moment of inertia equal to i and square of it. And dv term we write as a product of dA multiplied by dx. Now this y square dA is familiar term to us. And the integral of y square dA is same as the moment of inertia equal to i. We split this given term as integral of mx square that is the moment of inertia square divided by 2 times of n modulus divided by i and square of it. This term will club in a bracket so that we can replace this term which one is the product of y square dA as moment of inertia i and is multiplied by dx. Since we are integrating with respect to x and we have length of the beam is equal to l. So we have lower limit equal to 0 and upper limit equal to l. This term here we can replace as the moment of inertia i. So that this term and i will be get cancelled. So we can calculate here the strain energy due to bending as mx square. This i and this i will cancel. So we have divided by 2 times of e into i multiplied by dx and we have limit is from 0 to l. So this is generalized equation you can use 
because I have not taken here mx square as a constant term, neither n modulus, neither i. So this equation is applicable for variable cross section as well as the change in the bending moment. If the bending moment is remain constant, i is remain constant, you can take out here mx square outside. That is in the case of pure bending. So in pure bending and for uniform cross section, we have mx square will be taken common, two times of ei can be taken common and we can calculate here the strain energy in the case of pure bending. So if we have a case of a pure bending and we have uniform cross section, then we have strain energy u, m is taken common, that will be m square divided by two times of e into i. Integral of dx is same as equal to x and the upper limit equal to l. So we have m square l divided by two times of e i is the strain energy stored in a case of pure bending. One of the major application of the strain energy in the case of beam is to find out a deflection. For this one, we introduce here the Castillo-Vino first theorem for deflection. According to this theorem, the partial derivative of the strain energy of a structure with respect to a particular load is equal to the deflection of the structure at the point where the load is applied. So if the delta represents here the deflection at the point of application of the load, u represent the strain energy of the structure and p represents the load applied at the point of interest. Then according to the Castillo theorem, the partial derivative of the strain energy of a structure with respect to a particular load p is equal to the deflection of the structure. So mathematically we can write here the deflection delta is same as the partial derivative of the strain energy u with respect to the load applied at that point. So to find out the strain energy of the structure under the applied load, you have to integrate the strain energy density over the volume of the structure. Once you know the strain energy, then you partial differentiate where you are interested in the deflection and you can partial differentiate strain energy with respect to load and you can find out the value of delta or otherwise. If you know the value of delta for the standard cases, like simply supported beam or cantilever for point load UDL, then you can calculate here the value of U, that is the inter energy. So reverse also you can do. To find out the value of U here, we have to integrate delta with respect to dP. Since we already covered the chapter of deflection here, we can find out here the deflection of the load P, which is acting at the free end in a case of cantilever of length equal to L. So this one is the elastic core and the maximum deflection will be at free end. For pointed load, the deflection delta in the case of cantilever is given as P L cube divided by 3 times of EI. Here EI represents the Fletcher GD. So to calculate the strain energy in the case of cantilever with a point load, we can use the Castorgan theorem. This time we have del U by del p is same as equal to delta and the value of delta is same as p l q divided by 3 times of e i. So you can partially integrate with respect to p and you can calculate the value of u. So strain energy stored in the beam will be equal to l q divided by 3 i is a constant term and you have to integrate p. So integration of p with respect to dp will be equal to p square divided by 2. So we have p square l cube divided by 2 and 3 will be 6 times of e i. That is the inverse way to calculate the strain energy. The conventional method is to calculate the moment at any section. So let us consider here this is the section at a distance equal to x from b. So moment at this section will be for right hand side here moment is clockwise will be taken as negative value is minus p multiplied by x and we know that the strain energy due to bending moment is given by integral 0 to l mx square divided by 2 times of ei multiplied by dx. So you have to just solve this integral 0 to l mx square divided by 2 times of ei dx. This time we have mx square will be same as p square x square. So we can take out here p square outside divided by 2 times of ei. We will assume e i is a constant integral of x square dx and we have limit is from 0 to l integral of cube by 3 that is same as l cube by 3 
and we again get dust energy is the same equation that is obtained by Castellum theorem using the deflection is p square l cube divided by 6 times of e i. So this is a regular method and this one is the inverse method or we can use this method if we are familiar with the deflection. Or suppose we have given here a simply supported beam and exactly at the center here the load is acting equal to P. We know the maximum deflection in a simply supported beam when the load is acting. In that case the deflection will be equal to P L Q divided by 48 times of E I. So maximum deflection this time is delta and the value of delta in a case of simply supported beam will be given as P L Q divided by 48 times of E i. And suppose you want to find out here the strain energy then equate the value of delta with equal to partial derivative of u with respect to load p. And in this fashion we can calculate the strain energy in the case of simply supported beam. So just integrate this equation with respect to p. L cube divided by 48 E i is a constant term. Integral of p with respect to dp is p square by 2 so for 2 into 48 is 96 so we have u is equal to p square into l cube divided by 96 times e i a square bar of side 4 cm and 100 cm long is subjected to an axial load p the same bar is then used as a cantilever beam subjected to end load p the ratio of the strain energy stored in the second case to the first case we have to find out. So we have given here one square bar of side equal to 4 cm by 4 cm and is 100 cm long. So we have length equal to 100 cm is subjected to actual force P. So it is subjected to actual force P in the first case. Let's say we have a strain energy for this case equal to U1. Secondly, it is a cantilever of same length equal to L is equal to 100 cm and we have a same cross section even we have a same load. This time we have strain energy equal to U2. We have to find out the ratio of the strain energy stored in the second case that is U2 by U1 we have to find out. Since the load is remain constant here, the strain energy U1 in a square bar is given as 1 by 2 which one is a gradually applied load multiplied by p multiplied by dl is same as equal to 1 by 2 p dl is same as equal to p l divided by a e so we have a strain energy equal to p square multiplied by l divided by 2 times of area divided by ang modulus e in the cantilever we can calculate u2 by using the basic principle we'll take here one section at a distance equal to x from the free end so we have moment at this section will be equal to clockwise moment will be is p multiplied by x and we have strain energy is given as integral of mx square into dx divided by 2 times of x modulus divided by i and we have limit is 0 to l. Here we can replace the value of mx is equal to p into x. So we have constant value can be taken outside is 1 upon 2 times of e moment of inertia i. We have integral is from 0 to l. mx is same as p square multiplied by x square multiplied by dx. Integral of x square is x cube by 3 that is l cube by 3 which is become 6 times of e i in numerator we will get p square into l cube divided by 6 times of ang modulus multiplied by moment of inertia i and we require the ratio of u2 by u1 u2 by u1 is same as equal to p square into l cube divided by 6 times of e i and u1 equal to 2 times of area multiplied by egg modulus divided by p square multiplied by l. So in this case the p square term will be get cancelled. Even the 2 is cancelled here and we left here with 3. One of the l will be cancelled so we left here with l square 
E is also get cancel. So we have U2 by U1 is L square multiplied by area and in denominator we simply have 3 divided by moment of inertia equal to I. Now length this time is given as 100 cm so we have 100 square area will be equal to 4 cm by 4 cm divided by 3 times. For a square section it is a to the power 4 by 12 that is 4 to the power 4 and 12 will shift in numerator. Now you can solve this and you can find out this ratio. So u2 by u1 will come out to be approximately equal to 2500. Determine the elastic strain energy of the prismatic beam as shown in figure. We have given the load P is equal to 75 kN, length is equal to 8 meter. So exactly at the center the load is acting and we have simply supported beam. Value of EI is also given. In the case of simply supported beam, the maximum deflection will occur at the center. So at center we have maximum deflection that will be equal to delta. And in case of simply supported beam, this maximum deflection delta is same as equal to P L Q divided by 48 times of E i. If I use the Castelbury theorem, I know that delta is equal to del u by del p. So in this case, if we separate the variable, we will get del u is equal to P L Q divided by 48 times E i multiplied by del p. Now we can integrate it and we can find out the total value of strain energy. Integration of P with respect to del P will be equal to P square divided by 2. So we have P square LQ divided by 2 and 48 will be equal to 96 times of EI. We will use the SI unit here. P is equal to 75 kilonewton is 75,000. We have square of it. Length L is known equal to 8 meter. So we have to make a cube of it divided by 96 and the EI value is given in SI unit is 5.1 into 10 to the power 7. So directly we will get this value as Newton meter that is joules. So you will get this value of strain energy is approximately equal to 588 joules. The video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on Google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate. Join the course directly from your mobile. The link is given here.